All right, we will get started here. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. Now, if I share it in presentation mode, what I've learned the hard way is that you guys can't see it because it's a pop-up. So I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna make that mistake. You're gonna see it like in my Canva thing. So it looks a little weird, but you guys will get, you guys will get the idea. All right, can you guys all see that? Somebody wants to let me know. See me yes? Can you guys see my screen? Okay, I will assume yes. Um, all right. Oh, there's a chat thing that helps. Perfect. Thank you, Alexis. All right, awesome. So there's a little group chat there. You guys can ask questions if you like. We're going to do a little Q&A at the end as well. This is a little seminar that I wanted to do for you guys. Um, it's going to be like a little bit of an intro to a program that we do a couple times a year. It's called the Weight Control Blueprint Program. Um, I do it three times a year. It's my absolute favorite program to do because it's like a deep dive into the psychological mindset stuff of nutrition, which is where I really like to be. Um, it's not something that everybody needs, although I feel like a lot of people struggle with that stuff to an extent. So if this is, you know, even if the program is not for you, you're going to get a lot out of tonight. and It's going to help you think about things a lot differently. Um, but if you're like, oh my gosh, like all the things she's saying, this totally applies to me. I want to like do a deep dive into it. I highly recommend doing it. We've opened up the card to our clients. I like to keep the group around 20 people um, after that gets a little bit too big. So we already have 10 of our clients signed up. So we have another 10 spots open. So I'm going to just put in the chat here um, the link here in case anybody wants to check it out. But like I said, even if that's not something you guys are looking to do, um, you guys are going to get a ton out of tonight because I think everybody struggles with the mindset stuff a little bit with nutrition and it's such an important and overlooked piece. I think people that really struggle with nutrition are the ones who really don't ever pay attention to this stuff, but it's not your fault. We're not taught to. So this is kind of where like my wheelhouse is and where I really like to kind of like put a lot of emphasis. So if there's something you struggle with, you're my people. Um, so how to lose weight if you have no willpower. So how many of you guys, you can answer to yourselves or in the chat if you like, how many of you guys have been in a situation where you're like, I have no willpower or how does she have so much willpower? Or I wish I had her willpower. Like that weird willpower is always like a thing, right? And here's the funny part. I'm going to guess in a second. Willpower is not a real thing. The people who appear to have like no, who, people like no problems with willpower, they have willpower. For those people, food doesn't have the same meaning to them as it does to you. It's not a willpower thing. It's just that they don't care about it. So like if I have a client and let's say they go to their friend's house and their friend has cookies there and their friend doesn't care about cookies and she's like, oh my God, like how did you not eat any cookies? But then that woman might have an open bottle of wine at her house and she doesn't care about wine. She's like, well, how did you have an open bottle of wine there? So, you know, the cookies might mean something to the one friend, the wine might mean something to another friend. And the other one's like, well, we don't really care about that one. So it's really not about willpower. It's just about what you've assigned these meanings to. The cool thing about assigning meanings to different things is that you did it. So that means you can also like undo it. It's just about learning how. And this is why so many people struggle with nutrition because diets don't teach that. Diets actually exacerbate it. So when people go on diets, it almost exacerbates this problem. And then you're kind of like left never actually solving for the problem. Just, you're just told you have no willpower. You don't want it bad enough. If you, you know, if you wanted it bad enough, you wouldn't do it. And that's like, it's just so disheartening to hear that because it feels like there's something wrong with you and there's not. So I think by the end of this, you're going to be thinking about all this stuff a lot differently. So it's me. My name is Michelle. For you guys who don't know me, I'm the owner of Nutrition Mish. Um, our whole thing is we get people into good eating habits long term. Um, I was always really into finding an alternative to dieting, and we really try to get to the root of people's problems. Um, and we have a really high long term percent percentages to like people losing weight, but really like keeping it off. We don't judge our success by weight loss. We judge it by weight kept off um, because we really do get to the root of the problem. We're not just trying to like chase the number on the scale. We're trying to figure out, well, how do we get to in these eating habits that are going to stick? So all of our clients that come in, you know, there's always, there's, you know, we've kind of boiled down to like four different problems, but the people with the mindset piece, like those are the people that usually have struggled their whole lives with this stuff. So those are the people I really like to work with. And it's, it's a totally different problem. It's not a nutrition problem. It's really a psychology problem. So it really does deserve kind of its own arena. And that's what we're going to kind of sort of introduce tonight. And like I said, if this is something you really, really struggle with. Um, I would look into this weight control blueprint um, program that we have here. Um, and I think this is something that will be a huge game changer for you guys. All right. So let's dive in. So my parents growing up thought about one thing. They thought about me because I was a bad child and my 
dad always took my side. My mom always did it. So they fought about me. But the second thing they always fought about is M&Ms. My mom had this canister of M&Ms that she always put on the counter. My mom does not have a problem with food. She, you know, like it doesn't mean anything to her. Like she is one of those people that you would say, oh, she has great willpower. But my dad, who this whole program is based off of, nutrition mesh he really struggled with food he has a really difficult relationship with food so my mom would put this like canister of m&ms out because she like thought it looked pretty and my dad would always be like grabbing them and my mom would be like don't do that and my dad would be like can you just like put the m&ms away like i don't want to have them out anymore and my mom's like you just need more willpower like if you just don't do it like and she didn't understand so that was like one of the few fights that they got into was a stupid canister of m&ms because my dad was like i literally can't have them out here if they're out here i'm going to eat them and my mom was like well you just don't have willpower and it's kind of looking down on him and it was such a like contentious thing this like silly thing because she just didn't understand so how many of you guys who kind of raised your hand before about this willpower thing have felt understood by this you were kind of told like oh well if you really wanted it bad enough or like whatever kind of version of that you're told um it has nothing to do with willpower itself uh samantha do you have a question oh no you, you said raise your hand so i was doing the reaction sorry, That's great. sorry i forgot about them I, i'm like i'm that person in zoom meeting i still haven't figured out how to do that <laughs> but i love that that's all I'm like you have to teach I'm it on that. my phone too so it's a little wonky i'm not used to it sorry <laughs> no that's awesome yeah but that's something that so many people you almost feel like like what the hell is wrong with me you're like okay like do i not want it bad enough like what is my problem like it's really really disheartening but it's because those people don't have the same problem that you have again they might have it something else they might have it with alcohol wine, whatever you know like everyone has their thing but um Food's just not their thing, but people who don't have food as their thing have a really difficult time understanding people where food is their thing. So we're told, okay, have more willpower, but willpower is not a real thing. So what do we do about it? And that's what we're going to kind of go over tonight. So I can't take credit for this quote. I think this is a Tony Robbins quote, but I kind of love it. And it's so true. He said, willpower is not real. It's like lighter fluid. It gets burned up really quickly and then you're left with nothing. And that's how it feels. Like how many of you guys have like started a diet or started something and you're like, all right, I'm like going in and like balls to the wall. You're like, I'm eating my grilled chicken and my salad and my egg whites. And you're like, so, and then by like, which is of course on Monday, because why would you start this any other day? So you're gonna start that Monday, right? But then like Thursday, you're like, eh, you know what I mean? So like, it's like lighter fluid. It burns up really, really quickly. You're so gung ho. It looks so bright. And then it just dies out so quickly. And that's what willpower is. So willpower is not a real thing. It's lighter fluid. So next time you say that to yourself, I don't have willpower. That's not what you want. You don't want lighter. You want lighter fluid. You want something that's going to like stick. And that's what we're going to get into, like how to kind of like find what your thing is. So this was my dad. This is my dad. Um, my dad was a Weight Watchers guy. And then finally, like, I don't know, seven years ago, I was like, you literally, like, I, I'm, I have, I'm nutritionist. You can't go to Weight Watchers. Like, that's not okay. He doesn't come see me. He sees one of our girls, Rochelle, because like, I'm his daughter. What the hell do I know? I've just made sign. Um, so he comes to see Rochelle and he, my dad has gained and lost hundreds of pounds in my lifetime. Easily five, six, seven, 800 pounds, like back and forth, back and forth. Um, this is him. Mm -hmm. I want to say in 2000 and this is him in 2018 and this was just from working with us and he looks exactly the same as he does here in 2018 as he does today and knowing my dad my entire life he has never ever kept his weight consistent the only reason he is able to do it now is because he solved for all the problems in his head the whole time he was doing like weight watchers he was doing all these programs he was like trying to solve the problem on the scale he was chasing the symptom not the problem the problem was his mindset around food the problem is his relationship with food so once he started addressing that and actually solved for the problem this person who had a lifelong struggle with food who i saw growing up my entire inspiration for starting nutrition Mish was him and his struggle really to be honest with you um and he has kept that weight off for ooh, 17 18 19 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 you guys didn't see me count that on my hands because i'm bad at math like eight years and in my life I, I don't think i've seen him stay the same weight in one year let alone eight years but it's because he actually started solving for the right problem so and for him it was his mindset so this is a crazy stat did you know that the average woman spends 16, and I'm sure it goes for men too, but for whatever reason, the stat I saw was women, 16 years of her life on her a diet. Like how miserable is that? Like how miserable is that? Like, first of all, diets in general are miserable, right? Changing your eating habits is not the same skill set as going on a diet. When you're going on a diet, it's restrictive. You end up getting crazy with the skin. Like it's, it's again, and it's that lighter fluid feeling where it's like you have all this momentum and then it kind of burns out and you're like, all right, how much longer can I do this for? And then the funny part of that is, 
is that diets only have a 5% long-term success rate. That stat has always blown my mind. It blows my mind because the diet industry is like a, I don't know, six or $7 billion industry. And what can you get away with that's that expensive that has a 95% fail rate? Like, what if I told you there was a skin cream that helped you like get rid of wrinkles, but it only worked 5% of the time. And it was the equivalent of a $6 billion thing. Like that's crazy. So it's a $6 billion industry that only has a 5% long-term success rate. That was actually one of the things that made me want to start Nutrishmish was I was like, okay, we clearly don't have a solution for weight loss. Like the way I, you know, people will be like, oh, but when I went on this program, it worked. When I went on that program, it worked. I define worked as, did you keep it off? Because if you lose something, if you lose something, you don't find it again, it's lost. So if you lost weight, you didn't find it again. If you found it again, it didn't work, right? So in order to have a permanent solution, you have to have something that's going to actually solve for the right problem. So when we're talking about diets, diets only address the symptom. They don't address the actual problem. So with us, and I feel like if more people answered my survey, it'd be higher, but we have an 80% long-term success rate because we actually get to the root of the problem. So this is the way I kind of like to look at it. So if we have a weed, right, and you're doing a diet, the, the weed is kind of like, it's almost like flipping off like just the flower part of the weed. The roots are still there, so it's going to grow back. We have to get to the root of the problem. So the symptoms could be your weight, your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your A1C, whatever. Like I hate when people go to the doctor and they have like high blood pressure and the doctor's like, oh, lose weight. Like it's not losing weight. The weight loss doesn't necessarily come with that because there's a ton of ways to lose weight that are unhealthy, but that doesn't necessarily, that's not necessarily going to equate to you um, like eating better. You know, like you could eat worse and lose weight. You could, God forbid, get an illness and lose weight. It's not the weight loss. When you eat better and you fix your eating habits and you optimize your eating habits, whatever symptoms you have associated with it get better. So it'd be that your weight, your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your A1C, whatever, it gets better. But that's the root of the problem. And once you get the roots out, then it doesn't grow back. When you're on a diet, when you're just chasing a number on the scale, it's just kind of like clipping the top part off. The roots are still there. So we kind of look at it like this. So for people, when they come in to see us, um, and there's obviously a ton of subcategories and sub reasons for this, but it's usually due to like, and it's usually more than one thing, the quality of their food, the quantity of their food, how they're structuring their meals, their protein, carb, fat ratio, their timing, or their mindset and emotional. Now, the problem is there's not a program or diet that I know that addresses the mindset emotional because it's not a nutrition problem. It's a psychology thing. Um, even when people, you know, get sent to, you know, who are like eating disorders, get sent to nutritionists, you know, um, and we get a lot of those too. It's not a nutrition thing. It's a mindset thing. So you have to kind of like get to the root of the problem. Um, one of the really popular things right now, obviously, is Ozempic. Everyone's on Ozempic. Everyone's on the weight loss medications. And when you read all the studies, when people stop taking the medication, it comes back. Now, when you read the studies, the doctors and the scientists and their interpretation of that is very interesting. They're saying, well, that means that they need to stay on the medication forever because they come off the medication. And even though they're getting dietary intervention, even though they're seeing a nutritionist, they're still gaining the weight back. And so that means they have a disease. And that means they have to stay on this medication forever. If they come off it, they're going to gain the weight back because they have a disease. My opinion, and this is my opinion, is that it's not that they have a disease. It's that they're, for those people who really struggle with this stuff, there's been a lifelong struggle for them. The problems appear, right? They probably can. They're the ones that probably know more about nutrition than nutritionists do, right? They could teach the nutrition class. They know it all. It's their relationship with food. And once you fix that, it's okay. What's funny is when you talk about, when you talk to people on Ozempic or any of the weight loss medications, what they tell you is they tell you that their voice in the head is quieter, right? So what I tell people, if they insist on being on Ozempic or whatever it is, get into good habits mindset wise, while the voice is quieter, um, while the voice is quieter, you know, let's work on the emotional eating. Let's work on the night eating. Let's do all those things. So those patterns are no longer in your brain. So when you do go off of it, you've rinsed and repeated so much that they're no longer present. Um, I think if, if the weight loss industry in general paid more attention to mindset and psychology stuff, I'd see that they would have a lot more long-term success. Um, uh, Kevin asked, so the mindset has to do with willpower. So yeah, willpower is kind of like what we call something, but it, it's, not, it's not a real term. When you fix your mindset, people who have, you know, um, good willpower, or whatever, they just have a good relationship with food, right? Um, they never assigned a weird meaning to it. They never felt restricted by it. They never kind of put it on a pedestal. It doesn't mean anything to them. So when you have willpower, willpower is like that lighter fluid. You're like, oh my God, I'm so gung ho. I'm going to make all these crazy changes. That's like not a real sustainable thing. When you fix your mindset, you don't need the willpower because you're in control of food, who's on control of you. But the mindset emotional for a lot of people, that's where, you, where that's where you need to put your energy. So this is the formula that we use. This is if you're going on any kind of weight loss program, the formula in order to lose weight and keep it off, it's got to have these three things. 
The first thing is, can you eat more or less like this for the rest of your life? So for example, if you go on any diet, right, you'll probably lose weight if you can follow it. But if you can't follow it for the rest of your life, then you're probably going to gain the weight back. So for example, if you went on a low carb diet, would you lose weight? Absolutely. Um, yeah, of course you would. But the second that you eat a carb again, it's going to come back. Now, if you're not like me, I'm Italian. I like pasta. I could never not eat carbs, if, but you know, so if you can not eat carbs for the rest of your life and God bless, and that would be a great thing for you. But for the rest of us mortals here, um, you know, unless you're going to like cut them out for the rest of your life, all you're doing is manipulating your weight and then it's going to come back. So the first thing that you have to say about any nutrition program that you're doing is, okay, can I eat more or less like this for the rest of my life? The second one is, is do you actually enjoy the process? The brain wants to move towards things that make it feel good and away from things that make it feel bad, which we're going to get into in a second. So if you're like, okay, I am eating this way, but I really kind of hate it. I feel like I can't go out with my friends. I feel like I can't drink. I feel like I can't do anything I want to do. I feel restricted. I feel deprived. It might work in theory, whatever program you're doing, but if you hate it and it makes you miserable, again, you're not going to be able to stick to it forever, but it, so that's not something that's going to work long-term either. So number one, can you eat more or less like this for the rest of your life? Number two, do you actually enjoy the process? And then number three, does it actually solve for a problem that you have? So if your problem is your mindset, right? And you're going on a low carb diet, that's not gonna solve for the right problem. If you are somebody that struggles with the quality of your food, and that's the reason why your weight's a little bit weird, but you're going on Weight Watchers, Weight Watchers doesn't address that. So it's gotta solve for the right problem. And if you've identified as your problem is your mindset, that's what you got to fix. And there's not a whole lot of programs I know that address that. The closest one is intuitive eating. The problem with intuitive eating, which I like a lot of their concepts, but the problem with them is they believe in like no parameters, no restrictions, which I understand why they do that. But um, you're not going to necessarily lose weight with that. You're just going to like improve your, your mentality around food, which is good, but a lot of people still want both. So sometimes people are frustrated when they're like, okay, I'm doing this intuitive eating thing, but I'm not really like losing anything. It's a very long process the way that they do it, but you want both. And that's that's kind of what we try to achieve here. So when you're doing any nutrition program, can you do it for the rest of your life? Do you actually enjoy it? Does it solve a problem you have? If those three things are there, I guarantee you, you will see results and you will keep them. People come in all the time. They're like, how do I know that your program is going to work? And I go through that list. And I'm like, can you tell me one program that you've tried that had all three things and nobody ever can? So those are the three things that you want to look for. So how do you know if mindset's one of your problems? These are a couple of symptoms of that. So one of the hallmark ones, I think, is you know what you quote unquote should be eating, but you have difficulty executing it consistently. Like these people to me are the ones that could teach a nutrition class. Like they know everything about nutrition. They know everything. They know carb protein. They know everything. Um, the problem is that not a lack of knowledge. They just can't execute consistently because of their mindset, because of their relationship with food, because of the way that they talk to themselves. It's impossible. Um, those types of people who if the mindset's a problem, they may be very all or nothing with their eating habits. So like when they're good, they're like good. But then when they've crossed over and they're not good, like it's a disaster. So it's like very restrictive and then it can be very like bingy. So does anyone, so, so far, does that, how many people have you guys could be all or nothing or are very all or nothing with your eating habits? You guys, if you guys know how to raise your hand with the Zoom, like a fancy person, you could do that or just put it in the chat. Yeah, all or nothing, I think is a very, very common one. Yes. Um, you could probably teach the class in nutrition. Like I was saying, you're somebody that like, you know, all about food. It's not a lack of knowledge. You know what you quote unquote should be doing. Um, you know, fruits and vegetables are healthy. You know, this stuff. It's just that like, when it comes down to it, you can't do it consistently because of the way you talk to yourself around food. Cause you feel like you can't have stuff, all of those types of things. Um, for a lot of those people, weight loss, um, has been a lifelong struggle. You could probably chronic dieters. You've probably been like on and off something a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times it stems somewhere from childhood. So a lot of times people with mindset issues have had parents that may were maybe very restrictive with food with them or focused on weight. These are people who, you know, and again, this is very niche. So not everybody might experience this, but like you went to the doctor one time and you were like seven and the doctor like commented on your weight and you remember it and you were seven and there's no reason you should remember that, but you but it was traumatizing. So you do remember it. Um, or your mom or your dad, or somebody commented on your weight or an uncle or somebody. And you're like, Oh my God, I remember that trauma. Like I, like it's, it's like tangible. It sucks. You know? So a lot of times people who have the mindset issue, like they had those kind of like traumatizing experiences when they were young, or they had parents that were restrictive around food. I work with so many kids. And when I work with kids, I end up working with the parents because it's so hard. The, the obvious thing, you know, when you're, when you're trying to get your kid to eat healthy or you're, you are, you do want your kids to lose a little bit of weight is to, you know, is to 
on paper, okay, let me like not have them eat this stuff. But what that ends up doing is it ends up doing the opposite and ends up giving them very difficult relationship with food. Has anyone had parents that were like super restrictive around food? Like they weren't allowed to have things or they did comment on their weight and things like that. Though that's, it's a little bit niche. Not everybody struggles with that, but that is a hallmark for people who have the mindset issue. Um, and again, it usually happens at a young age, but you remember random comments and things like that. Your self-talk around weight and body image eating habits is very negative. So you would not talk to another person the way that you talk to yourself around food. Like if I put a thought bubble over your head, you would not say what you say to yourself to another person. And the problem with that, remember what I said before, the brain wants to move towards things that make it feel good away from things that make it feel bad. If you're constantly berating yourself, your brain is going to want to shut down and not deal with this at all. It makes it so hard to execute consistently. Um, another one here, you make yourself feel guilty after eating things that you feel like you quote unquote shouldn't. So you eat something and then you're beating yourself up for it for days and days and days. You're making yourself feel really bad about that stuff. That's another hallmark of somebody that struggles with the mindset stuff. You talk to yourself like you shouldn't. If I tell somebody that they shouldn't do something, that's all they're going to want. So now you've created this like crazy dynamic where they're going to be putting food on this pedestal. And that's where the willpower thing comes in. Um, you eat out of emotion you eat when you're bored, happy, stressed, sad, night eating, stuff like that. You're someone who's going to start Monday. Like these are all harm hallmarks of people that have the mindset issue. So do you guys hear some of these traits within yourself as you're, as I'm kind of like listing them out? There are more, but those are kind of like the most common ones that I see. Okay, cool. So like, what do you do? <laughs> um, the answer is not about nutrition, right? The answer, like I was saying this whole time, it's really all about your mindset. So here's what's really going on. And I'm like dumbing this down a lot. This is something that we really dive into in the weight control blueprint. But if this is something that's like a minor struggle for you, like this information alone is going to just be enough where you can like, okay, let me explore this and make some changes. If this is something where you're like, okay, no, like I need to do a deep dive on this. Like this is a real, this is where my, this is the root of my problem. Then I highly recommend, you know, joining the blueprint program. But, um, but for now, this is kind of like an overview spark note version. So your brain will autopilot anything that you repeat over and over again, and it recognizes it as it's true. You would not be able to function if your brain could consciously pick up on all the stuff going on all the time. So what happens is when you've told yourself something over and over and over again, your brain's like, oh, that's true. So it just like autopilot, autopilots it and it kind of like plays without your like knowledge in the background, which is why like, you know, you can drive to work and like not even realize that you drove there because you've done it so many times, right? So what's happened is, is you kind of trained yourself around food to have these kind of like autopilot things going on. And it's all like happening in a split second. It's all happening really without your consciousness or your permission even. Um, but it's kind of creating your whole identity around food and nutrition. So this is kind of how your all of this builds together. Whatever you, whatever you think creates a feeling. So any feeling that you've ever had does not come without a thought. So your thoughts become feelings, your feelings become actions, your actions become identity. This is all neuroscience. So this is all, this is where all of this is born. This is like how all the little like connections in your brain get made. So tying this to nutrition. So for example, let's say that you've taught yourself, well, I can't eat that. I'm on a diet. I can't eat that. I really shouldn't eat that. I really shouldn't eat cookies. Like how many of you guys have said to yourself, I really shouldn't be eating that. Or you even say it like subconsciously to yourself when there's like, unhealthy things around, or maybe you say to yourself, like every freaking time there's something unhealthy around you. Like, oh, I really shouldn't eat that. I really shouldn't. So the second that you feel like you shouldn't do something, you automatically feel restricted and deprived. Right. So like, and then that makes us want it more like in high school, did you like the guy or girl that liked you? Or did you like the guy or girl that didn't like you? You always like the guy or girl that didn't like you until they like you. And then you're like, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, that's just how it works. We all want, we can't have. So you've been telling yourself, you know, well, I'm on this diet. I'm trying to lose weight. I'm really not happy with how I look. I shouldn't eat that. I can't eat that. And now, oh, I shouldn't do it. Now I really want it. Totally goes against human nature. So now you're feeling restricted and deprived. When you feel restricted and deprived, eventually you're going to be like, screw it. I don't want to feel miserable. Again, your brain wants to move away from things that make it feel bad towards things that make it feel good. This is making me feel bad. I don't want to do it. Screw it. I'm going to eat it. So then the action is that you eat it. And now your identity is like, oh, should I have no willpower? Right? That's where all this stuff comes from. So in order to kind of fix the root of the problem, we have to kind of like undo and unpack all this stuff. And there's a way to do it. It's like, it's it, there's a whole science behind it. It's just not in nutrition. It's not in dieting. You're not going to find the answers there. Um when I was creating these programs, I talked to a lot of psychologists. I talked to a lot of doctors. I did a lot of research on myself. I talked to like, I did habit change experts, like the whole thing that the reason that we struggle with this is because the answer is over here. It's not over there. We're all looking over here and the answer is over here. But hopefully this is making sense as I'm kind of saying it. So another example is how many of you guys have thought I have to eat perfectly to lose weight. I have to eat perfectly. Or, you know, for you, a perfect week means like I need anything bad. And the second that you eat something bad and you're calling it bad, which again, not a good thing, but that's what we're doing. Um, 
then you screwed up, right? So it kind of creates this whole thing. So the thought can be, I have to eat perfectly in order to see results. So then what are you going to feel? You're going to feel pressure. And then the second that you don't do that, you're gonna be like, oh, well, I messed up. Now, here's the funny thing. I had a woman come in to see me once and she was like, oh my God, I had the worst week ever. And I was like, all right, cool. We'll fix it. What happened? She's like, I had the worst week ever. I was like, well, what'd you eat? She's like, well, I had, I had pizza on Friday. And I was like, okay. I was like, what about the other meals? And she great for the other meals, but that, but she, she was only remembering like the pizza and she's like, that screwed up my whole week. Now here's the funny thing. Your body responds to improvements. So if I have a guy that comes in to see me and he's eating 15 cheeseburgers a week and I was eating 10, guess what? He's going to see results that week. But if I tell him like, Hey, stop eating cheeseburgers are bad for you. That's not necessarily wrong, but he's most likely binging by Thursday because we told him he couldn't do it. So this person happened to have a much better week than she was doing before, but she had one thing that she didn't deem correct. It wasn't perfect. So she put all this pressure on herself. She felt like, oh my God, I screwed up because I had this pizza. So now she's going to give up. And then her identity is like, well, I'm always going to struggle with food if she's not seeing me or somebody that like can kind of like correct that. So then that's somebody that's always like on and off something. So she's gonna be like, well, I already screwed up for the one slice of pizza. I already crossed that line. So I might as well do it all. And then she's starting again Monday. So like, that's where like all of these things are born. They're kind of like off all born from like the little stories and the little rules that we've created in our, in our own brains. That's what makes it so difficult. So until you like unpack and rewire and unwind all these things, it's always going to be a little bit of a struggle. So that's what we need to do. We need to rewrite the script. We need to rinse and repeat until your brain memorizes it. If you're driving to work right now, you don't have to think because you know your route, but then let's say there was like a detour and you had to go another way. You would be able to rinse and repeat that after a while, you wouldn't have to think about that either. But what we have to do is we have to kind of like identify the, the thoughts that you're having around food right now and start to rewire and, and, and teach your brain something new. And then once we do it over and over again, your brain's like, oh, cool, this is true. And then, you don't, and then it just becomes who you are and what you do. But until you do that, you're always going to have these struggles with food. Is this making sense so far? So the cool thing is, is that when you practice anything, you're going to get better at it. So people are like, well, how do I know this is going to work? I've done all these things before. Every single person that says that to me, I notice in them, they are so good at dieting because they've been dieting their whole life. They're great at dieting. Dieting doesn't necessarily equal weight loss. You're not supposed to be able to stick to diets long-term. 95% of people don't, but they're really good at it because they've done it so many times. It doesn't equate to weight loss that you're going to stick, keep off, but they're good at that. So you're probably great at dieting because you practice it so many times, right? So dieting is not the same thing as weight loss, which is not the same thing as like changing your eating habits, but you can't focus and practice the right thing over and over again and not get better at it. It's literally impossible. But once you start practicing the right thing, now you're going to start to see the results that you've been looking for. Probably this whole time you have not been have given the opportunity to practice the right thing because you didn't know. So here are some steps that you guys can start to take. The first step um, is I want you to start thinking about what is your, I call it your ideal eating self look like. So in other words, like what qualities do you want in addition to the weight loss? Um, I had a friend once who was telling me that she she was somebody who struggled with weight her whole life. She was somebody who's in um, Overeaters Anonymous, uh, which is basically like the Al-Anon model, but for for, for food. And uh, the Al-Anon model works great for alcohol. It does not work great for food. Um, Overeaters Anonymous is, uh, it actually exacerbates the problems a lot of the times, but it's because it makes the mindset worse, not better. Um, so she was somebody who really struggled. She really for her wedding. I didn't know her then, but she was telling me, she's like, I really wanted to be whatever weight by my wedding. So she was, she like starved herself. She was crazy about it. She got to the weight for her wedding, but she was so paralyzed. She didn't eat her own cake at her wedding. She was like, she, she didn't even enjoy her honeymoon. She was like so afraid of gaining the weight back. So she thought she got, she, she was like, oh, what I wanted the weight. She got the weight, but she was so miserable because she didn't have any of the qualities that she wanted that went with it. So like, what qualities do you want in addition to the weight loss once you're kind of your ideal eating self? So these are just a couple of examples. I don't want to be stressed out about scale anymore. How many of you guys freak out when you get on the scale? I know a bunch of you in here already do for sure. Um, I don't I don't want to be stressed out at the scale. Do you want to be able to have like one cookie if you want or five cookies? Do you want to be able to do what you want to do and not <laughs> Kathleen? I just think it's what I was looking at. <laughs> You're the one. So like you want to be able to like have one cookie, take it or leave it. It doesn't matter. You can have one, you can have four, it doesn't matter. Like you it, you're in control of it, it's on control of you. You don't, maybe you don't want to make yourself feel guilty when you eat something. If you eat something you feel like you quote unquote shouldn't, you don't want to make yourself feel guilty about it. Maybe you want to be able to wear whatever's in your closet, like not just what fits you at the moment. You don't want to always have to order the salad. You want to be able to like order the chicken parm sometimes. Um, you know, I've gone through this myself. I had a terrible relationship with food because I grew up, you know, watching my dad or whatever. So I've gone through this whole process myself. Like I, if you, and if you guys, I joke about it all the time. Like when I go out to dinner, like I order whatever the hell I want. And like, I used to be a little self-conscious about that because people would be like, you're a nutritionist and you can eat that. And like, now I'm like, yeah, do you want me to teach you how? Because it's so liberating 
to be able to go out and eat what you want and like know it's fine and know it's not going to affect you on the scale and like it's cool but like really feeling that and not letting that totally derail you um do you want to actually enjoy eating healthy foods I have so many people say to me being like I don't like healthy foods I want to like vegetables I want to like like that that's something that we have to kind of like put in your brain and teach you how to do that and understand it. Like, you know, when I really, and we do a whole week on this in the weight control blueprint where we do a deep dive into like, well, what actually happens with food? Like I'm not somebody that naturally like vegetables. I don't know if I'm allowed to like say that as a nutritionist, but I'm not. Um, but when I was in school for nutrition and I learned how medicinal and how powerful they can be, like, that's what really did it for me. Like if you eat, there's a compound in broccoli that can stop cancer cells from forming. Like fucking no brainer. Sorry, Chris. No brainer. Right. Like, like, but we're not taught that stuff. We're just taught like, well, low calorie or do you like it? And you only have so many calories to play with. So make sure that like, they're all coming from like enjoyment. So then we end up spending it on like weird stuff, like, you know, Weight Watchers, ice cream bars or whatever, but we're missing like the nutrition components. Like, would you actually like to enjoy healthy foods? We spend a whole big chunk of time on that in the weight control blueprint so that we're rewiring your brain to think about healthy foods differently. So you actually like want to eat them. Now we work in the fun stuff too, but like, when you think about it, nutrition, it's the tools that your body needs to make you the right way. So think about what you guys ate this week or today. Like, are you going to get made correctly? Are your cells going to get made correctly? Like your body's amazing. It can, it can make you out of anything, but you know, if you're eating processed food and you're eating like, you know, all this crap that we have, like, that's what you're being made out of. Are you going to made of that? Or like, you know, fruits and vegetables and like fresh stuff that your body actually like needs, you know, you don't be like made out of like matchsticks and glue. Right. Um, do you not want to have anxiety around what you're eating anymore? Are you somebody that's like, oh my God, I don't know the right thing. Um, I had somebody come in the other day who was like a newer client and she was like, so confused. And nutrition, ugh, it's, it's so annoying. It's it's designed to be confusing. Like it all contradicts each other. So that's something else that we spend a lot of time in the blueprint program of like teaching you like how to filter through the information. Um, she's like, you know, six small meals a day is the exact opposite of like intermittent fasting, like which one's right. And there's a way to kind of like filter through that, which is something we go through, but you know, like people get anxiety. They're like, I heard this is good. I heard that's good. Like, how do I know? Like eggs are good for you. Then they're going to kill you. Like, which is it? So like minimizing anxiety, um, you don't want to feel like you have to like punish yourself for overindulging. Like, like, I don't know if any of you guys have ever overindulged and you like, don't eat enough the next day. You starve yourself the next day. You force yourself to work out. You feel guilty if you don't work out, like that kind of thing. Um, do you always call yourself fat? Like that sucks. You know what I mean? Like, what do you, what do you want your ideal eating self to look like? So that's what I want you guys to start thinking about. Like that's step one. Then once you kind of know, start to like pay attention to and identify, debunk your and rewrite your food rules. Like we all have these like weird food rules that we live by. And when we, when we kind of go through this in the weight control blueprint program, um, people are like, Okay, like that doesn't even make sense when I say it out loud, but like you don't realize it because again, your brain, you've said it so many times in your brain that it just recognizes it as true. So it just kind of keeps playing in the background without your knowledge until you like think about it. And you're like, oh, right. No, like I don't need to, that one doesn't even make sense anymore. So a couple minor examples of that is I have to eat perfectly to lose weight. You don't. I have worked with over 10,000 people. I've never had one of them eat quote unquote perfectly and they've all been able to lose weight. It's about eating better than your body's used to. Um, some people have a very specific number in mind that they feel like they have to weigh, I have to weigh 133 pounds, I have to weigh 152 pounds. Like if I put you and you here and here, and one of you was 152 pounds and one of you was 150 pounds, you would not be able to tell me which one is which just by looking. You might feel it in your body, but like you wouldn't be able to tell me, but we have these like weird specific numbers in mind that we like have to be because we've assigned these meanings to it. Um, you might feel like, oh my God, I ate like my, my client who ate the sliced pizza. I screwed up because I ate the pizza. Well, did you? No, because you ate well the other 20 meals out of the week. It was just the one, which is like really better than most people eat. Um, but she felt like she screwed up. So that one wasn't even true. So how do we kind of rewrite that? So like identify and debunking your food rules. And then if they are true, well, how do you maybe like have a mindset shift around it? So it feels better. So that's that's step number two. And then step number three is like really making the process feel good. You want to like use psychology because again, the brain wants to move towards things that make it feel good and away from things that make it feel bad. So if you're constantly berating yourself and constantly making yourself feel bad and guilty about what you're eating and blah, 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 like it just makes the process so much harder. Um, this is one of the main reasons why people struggle to change their eating habits, despite really wanting to and knowing it's in their best interest because they're making themselves feel bad. So just a couple examples of this, um, you know, you're making changes in a really dramatic fashion, all or nothing, right? Versus like more of a progressive fashion. It's like, you know, in school, you don't go from like freshman year to senior year. You like freshman year, sophomore year, junior year. See, there's a progression to it. And that's why people are able to do it. When you go from like McDonald's to grilled chicken and salad and egg whites, like your brain's be like, what? Like it's too dramatic of a jump. Feeling like you can't have stuff, right? Restriction, telling yourself you can't. Like I'd rather you work things in and learn how to do that rather than like cutting them out being very like based on the scale versus based on habits, right? We can chase a number on the scale, but you're going to be way more successful if you chase the habits, right? Like I much rather tell somebody, okay, like eat, you know, in, in our program, we talk about indulgences, but I say, okay, eat this many indulgences 
versus that many indulgences, like they're going to be way more successful than if they're like just trying to like chase a number on the scale. Um, if you have a difficult week, you're beating yourself up for it. Like difficult weeks are inevitable. It's not a matter of if it's a matter of when, but if, you know, like on a traditional diet program, you know, I used to hear people, you know, when I used to work for other companies, they would be like, oh my God, I had a really bad week. I don't want to come in today. I don't want to get weighed today. And I used to be like, why? Like, this is like, I, listen, I love telling you, you did a good job. Don't get me wrong. But like, if that's all I did, I'd be bored. Like you're here because you're working on something. Like if you weren't, then you wouldn't have to be here if you're already great at this. So like what's going on is you had a difficult week. Like, let me help you work through that. So then next time that happens, like you, you know, know how to handle it differently versus like, you're just beating yourself up, making yourself feel bad about it. This is a total wasted opportunity, but this is how we handle weight loss, right? It's all about the mindset stuff. Um, a lot of people compare how far they are from perfect rather than how much better they were than last week. Um, I'll have somebody come in and she's like, oh my God, like, like how they ate from this week to last week was so much better. And they lost weight as a result, because that's a reflection of, of what they've done. But they're like, but I'm not over here yet. You know? So again, you're making yourself feel bad because you're not over here, but you're not even acknowledging like all the success and all the accomplishments you've had over here. Um, negative self-talk versus positive self-talk. These are all the things that make people really struggle with weight chronically. So if this sounds like something that you're dealing with, like, again, you want to like get it from the root of the problem. So start to think about this stuff. If you're like, okay, that kind of makes sense. Great. If not, you know, sign up, I'll, I'll post the link over here again. Um, self-talk, right? So we were talking about thoughts, feelings, actions, identity. So like, you know, somebody saying, well, I have no willpower. So what's going to happen? You're going to feel like a failure. If you're feeling like a failure. You're going to like, you could binge because that can make you feel bad. And then you're going to like, shit, I always struggle with food. Like, how do we change this thought here so that you have a different feeling, action, and identity, right? Again, this stuff has nothing to do with nutrition. It's all psychology. And then step four is how do you apply it in real life? And that's something that we do in the weight control blueprint uh, program as well. So usually like we'll do a module one week, you guys have a week to apply it. And then the second week, we kind of like all talk about it. And the coolest thing about that group that I see every time I do it, and it's the part I love and it happens without fail is people are like, oh my God, that my words are coming out of that girl's mouth. Like everyone thinks like they're the only ones that struggle with this, but they're not like, and I, I take it for granted because I hear it a million times a day, every day but people really feel like they're the only ones that struggle with this. Like this is such a normal struggle. It's just that the solutions that we're presented with aren't solving for the right problem. So taking all this stuff and applying it in real life. So there's three levels to kind of like mastering any kind of situation, any kind of like skill that you want. So the first is like knowledge. So now you guys have a lot of knowledge about this stuff. You like understand it, right? So like I, for example, know what skydiving is. I understand it. What we're going to do the weight control blueprint is get you to experience it, right? So now you've like done it before, you know what it feels like, like you, you're able to do it. So like if I like have gone skydiving, I know what it feels like. And then mastery is rinsing and repeating to the point where it's like autopilot. So like, you know, and we've gone over a little bit of knowledge here. You understand a little bit. We're going to obviously do a, a bigger deep dive in the actual program, but more importantly, you're going to get a chance to experience it. And then you're going to be rinsing and repeating to the point where it just becomes like what you do. And that's really, really empowering. So just a little bit about the program here. The goal of the Weight Control Blueprint is to like be on the path to have complete control over food, have a healthy relationship with food, be able to eat and indulge without feeling guilty, um, you know, getting eating habits that are actually like consistent, being able to control binge eating, um, and actually being able to stick to a nutrition program finally, which is really cool. So if this is something you guys are interested in, um, you know, we cover pretty much everything I said. We, we go over like how to actually rewire the brain. We go over like how to actually enjoy healthy food. We go over emotional eating, how to deal with stress eating. Um, we cover um, like how to like figure out your you know ideal eating self. We cover like everything. So it's a 12 week program. It's going to start Monday, February 26th, this Monday at 7 p.m. Um, we do it through Zoom. It's 12 weeks long. It's me. It's my favorite program to do. You don't have to be on live. It's great when you can be on live. I love when people are on live because the discussions are, end up being so great. But I've actually had people like go through the whole program never being on live and like they've gotten just as much out of it as, as just watching. So you get you get to watch the replays, which is really cool. So what we do is you get 12 weeks of the course taught by me. Um, you get lifetime access to the content. You also get three months of our apps, resources, tools. You get a ton of stuff in there too, private community, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, this is just like the retail value that you see when you see these things. But the other thing that I wanted to include, because I think it's so important, is our signature program, our Eat Right, Live Right program. A lot of you guys on this webinar are already in it. That's actually going to be included in this because the Eat Right, Live Right program helps you design your own nutrition philosophy that you can do for life. Um if you struggle with the mindset stuff, you might have difficulty executing it. So the weight control blueprint is going to be how you're going to execute it. And then the eat right, live right is going to be what you're going to actually be eating, what you're actually going to be doing. That's what your nutritionist is going to help you out with. So those are the one-on-one -on -one weekly sessions that we do. So we're actually including that in. So that's actually, so if you're, if you're already a member, that's going to be a 
that's $447 you're saving yourself. If you're new, just because the first month is more, it's actually 615. So if this is something you want to do, it's a really, so the total retail value, it's almost two grand, but then the way that we're going to do it for you guys, because I think this is so important. It's either, if you want to do, it's actually 997, that should be a nine there. Um, so it's, um, either 997 if you want to do it once, or you can split up into payments, three payments of 350, which if you want to click on that link that I sent you guys, you can see it right there. Um, I just want you to hear, and the reason like, uh, guys, this program is just such a game changer for people. And I've just seen, I've seen people struggle their whole lives with this, like feel liberated. Like, I love working with people in OA with this. Cause it's just like, they're like, no, you're not, you're not gonna be able to help me. And then all of a sudden they're just working on the right thing. And they're like, Holy shit. So I just wanted to share this little clip, you guys, from um, one of our members that have done this. This is um, from a podcast that we're actually going to be uh, putting out tomorrow, but I'm going to give you guys like a little like sneak peek just so you can kind of hear it from somebody who actually like went through it. This was, and this was actually somebody, this is actually, this is actually somebody who went through it, but she also never attended live. I wish she did because I feel like she would have added so much more to the discussion, but just listen to what she said. This is towards the end of the podcast when I asked her about it. If you're somebody out there is you guys hear me? You guys hear? Did I lose you guys? For you, but not the recording. Okay. You can hear me though? Yes. Okay. Let's see if we can get that to work one more time. <clears throat> Mesh, what would you tell them? A hundred percent do it. It's worth every penny. It's worth every minute of time. Um, honestly, it's the best thing I've ever done in terms of my health and eating, like dieting, I've spent countless amounts of dollars and time and literally got nowhere in my head has been all fuzzy with nonsense. This has literally changed my mindset, my outlook and my body. I mean, just because it's, it literally is, it's literally the best thing. It's absolutely the best thing you could do for yourself. hundred percent. You know, that sound clip's going everywhere, right? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh my God, you're going to make me cry. That was, oh, gosh, but it really is. It literally changed my life in such a great way. Like you took a lot off my shoulders and a lot out of my head and it changed so much for me. And I like truly appreciate every bit of it because it's been such a change and such a help for me. All right. I just wanted to share that with you guys so you could hear it from somebody that wasn't me. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Even if you like don't want to do make control blueprint, hopefully it just got you thinking the right way about all of this stuff. Um, I hope it helped kind of like under, help you understand and judge yourself if willpower is like a thing for you because it shouldn't be. It's really not. Um, if you guys are interested in the weight control blueprint, like I said, I posted the um, the uh, link right there. We're going to have the car open until Monday. If you guys have any questions or you're like, okay, I really want to like do it, but I like, have some questions. Like I'll just throw my email address also in the chat. You can shoot me an email. It's just michelle at nutritionmitch.com. Just copy and paste that. You guys can, you know, talk to me offline. We can maybe set up a time to talk, but um Hopefully, I hope you guys got something out of that. I hope that kind of like alleviated you of the stress of like feeling like you need to have willpower. If you guys do struggle with the food relationship piece of it, um, you know, I hope I hope that was something that was helpful for you guys too. If you guys are on the Eat Right Live Right program and you do sign up for that, like I said, we'll pause your Eat Right Live Right session, so that cut that gets kind of factored in, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, does anyone have any questions or anything or any, anything they want to share about like what they learned or like how they're feeling about it or if it's resonated with them or if you do have any questions in general about mindset? Emotional eating, stress eating, anything like that? Anybody? All right, cool. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope you guys got something out of this. And hopefully I see you all soon. Thanks so much for uh, for checking it out. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank Good you. Night. Bye.